the two body organs resembling two beans, the kidneys. These organs are normally located behind the abdominal cavity, specifically in the retroperitoneal space, on each side of the spine within the lumbar region. Each kidney, approximately the size of a fist, weighs around four to six ounces. They are ensconced within a protective cushion of fatty tissue and fibrous connective tissue. These unassuming organs wield immense importance in the body, responsible for removing nitrogenous waste products such as urea, creatinine, and uric acid. Additionally, they play a crucial role in maintaining the delicate balance of water and electrolytes, including sodium and potassium. Furthermore, the kidneys serve as a hub for releasing essential hormones such as renin, erythropoietin, and calciferol and contribute to the degradation and elimination of hormones circulating in the bloodstream. Generally, the kidneys are structurally composed of an outer cortex region akin to the bark of a tree and an inner medulla region, which resembles marrow. A depression known as the hilum is found on the medial border of the kidney, serving as a passage for blood vessels and nerves. Within each kidney, a complex network of nephrons, numbering as many as one million, serves as the functional units. Each nephron consists of a cup-shaped structure called Bowman's capsule, which is connected to a long and partially coiled renal tubule. Enclosed within Bowman's capsule is a cluster of capillaries known as the glomerulus, and there are approximately one million such glomeruli located in the cortex region of each kidney. The renal tubule, on the other hand, can be divided into three primary sections. First, there is the proximal convoluted tubule, responsible for transporting the filtered fluid, known as filtrate, from Bowman's capsule. Second, there is the loop of Henle, characterized by its elongated hairpin-shaped configuration. Lastly, the distal convoluted tubule carries the filtrate to a collecting duct. Blood enters each kidney through the right and left renal arteries from the aorta. Upon entering the kidney at the hilum, the renal artery branches into progressively smaller arteries, known as arterioles, which lead into glomeruli. Due to their small size, blood flows through these arterioles at a slow yet constant pace. Also, the kidney prioritizes maintaining proper blood flow, so it has a unique mechanism for this purpose. In the event of reduced blood pressure within the kidney's vessels, resulting in reduced blood flow, the kidney responds by secreting renin into the bloodstream. Renin triggers the production of a substance that induces the contraction of arterioles, ultimately raising blood pressure and restoring normal blood flow within the kidneys. Typically, the kidneys produce urine through a filtration process. As blood circulates through the glomerular capillaries at elevated pressure, the thin walls of each glomerulus allow water, salts, sugar, urea, and other nitrogenous wastes, like creatinine and uric acid, to exit the bloodstream. These filtered substances then accumulate within the Bowman capsule, which encircles each glomerulus. It's worth noting that the glomeruli's walls prevent larger elements, such as plasma proteins, platelets, and blood cells, from entering the Bowman's capsule. Consequently, these components stay in the blood and are generally absent from urine. Filtration at this site is facilitated by several factors. First, the hydrostatic blood pressure within the glomerular capillaries is higher compared to other capillaries, primarily due to their smaller size. Second, the coiled structure of glomerular capillaries provides a substantial surface area for filtration. Third, the remarkable permeability of the glomerular capillaries, thanks to numerous small pores, renders them more porous than typical capillaries. It's quite astonishing that around 1,200 milliliters of blood circulate through the kidneys every minute. When plasma traverses the glomerulus, it experiences a reduction of over 10% of its volume, which then becomes part of the glomerular filtrate. The average glomerular filtration rate amounts to approximately 180 liters, equivalent to about 45 gallons over a 24-hour period. 
This volume surpasses the entire fluid content in the human body by 4.5 times. Attached to each glomerular capsule is the renal tubule through which these substances must flow. As water, sugar, salts, urea and other waste products pass through the renal tubule, most of the water, all of the sugar, glucose, vitamins, amino acids and nearly all of the sodium are reabsorbed into the bloodstream through the tiny capillaries surrounding each tubule. This active reabsorption process guarantees that the body retains vital substances like glucose, water and sodium. In the usual course, the renal tubules effectively reclaim roughly 99% of the filtrate, reintegrating it into the bloodstream, while merely about 1.5 litres remain for excretion as urine within a 24-hour span. This reabsorption mechanism empowers the kidneys to finely tune blood chemistry. Unwanted elements like waste products and surplus salts remain in the filtrate and are expelled in urine, while crucial substances like glucose and amino acids are restored to the bloodstream. It's worth noting that a substantial portion of these substances undergo multiple reabsorptions. The final step in urine formation involves the secretion of certain compounds from the bloodstream into the renal tubule. These byproducts of metabolism can become hazardous if they accumulate within the body. Consequently, Waste products, excess salts like potassium, acidic substances and certain drugs such as most antibiotics exit the body through urine. As a result, only waste materials, water, salts, acids and partially metabolized remnants of some drugs are retained within the renal tubule. Each renal tubule, now containing the modified filtrate known as urine, culminates in a larger collecting tubule. All the collecting tubules ultimately converge into the renal pelvis, a bowl-shaped region situated in the central part of the kidney, which also contains small, cup-like structures called calluses. The renal pelvis subsequently tapers into the ureter, a conduit responsible for transporting urine to the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder, a muscular sac, serves as a temporary reservoir for urine, it typically features sphincter muscles that regulate the exit from the bladder to the urethra. As the bladder fills and pressure builds up at its base, an individual senses the urge to urinate and can voluntarily relax the sphincter muscles. It's worth noting that by the time the filtrate reaches the renal pelvis, its composition has been meticulously adjusted. The adapted filtrate, now known as urine, comprises approximately 96% water. 2.5% nitrogenous waste products, primarily urea, 1.5% salts, creatinine, acids, drugs, and traces of various substances such as bile pigments, which may contribute to its distinctive color and odor. This composition holds significance in medical practices like urinalysis, enabling the monitoring of kidney disorders such as diabetes. An interesting fact is that healthy urine is normally sterile and has been employed to cleanse battlefield wounds in situations where clean water was unavailable. However, when exposed to bacterial activity, urine rapidly decomposes, yielding ammonia and other byproducts. This ammonia is responsible for causing diaper rash in infants. I hope you've learned something valuable from this video. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, so don't hesitate to share your feedback. And don't forget to check out my other videos if you want more great content. Cheers and see you in the next one.